everyone welcome back to inside ambitions main report the philly and drexel news rewind so that you don't get left behind i'm gabrielle remo now do not forget to subscribe to our new youtube channel and to follow us on instagram at inside underscore ambition all right shameless plug out of the way check before we shift into maximum overdrive with the weekly news recaps, we gotta process the news of last year. 2020 was definitely a crazy one, with some high highs and some significantly low lows. In case you were stuck inside for the past year, as you should have been, let me catch you up on some of the biggest events of this year. Now in January, some crazy things happened that kicked off 2020. We almost got into a serious military problem when the US government approved the assassination of Qasem Soleimani. This prompted reasonable concern that the country might lead ourselves into World War III, not even a full month into the year. Thankfully, the conflict quickly de-escalated. And speaking of the US government, January also saw the beginning of the impeachment of the 45th United States President, Donald J. Trump, making him the third president to ever been so. Aside from this, the world experienced the loss of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna and a tragic helicopter crash that claimed their lives along with seven other passengers. The February newsstands were intense, Harvey Weinstein was convicted and sentenced for his heinous crimes. The world witnessed the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, as well as the first U.S. death from COVID-19. We also saw the loss of rapper Pop Smoke. February did see some positives, such as the 54th Super Bowl, in which the Kansas City Chiefs defeated the San Francisco 49ers, and the 92nd Academy Awards saw Parasite win Best Picture, the first foreign film to ever do so. As for March, we saw the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, with the stock market beginning the largest crash since the Great Depression. Schools, businesses, and many major industries began shutting down, and Drexel University students were sent home on March 14th. Now, for April, it was the best month out of the whole year because it was my birthday, airy season. <laughs> That's all the news I have to report for Miss April. Just kidding. I have crippling birthday anxiety. April was the month where lots of politics was underway. In the beginning of the month, Bernie Sanders dropped out of the 2020 presidential race, leaving former vice president under the Obama administration, Joe Biden, as the sole Democratic runner. May was a long month of the year that was greeted, unfortunately, with more tragedy. Hurricane season began in the United States, starting with Tropical Storm Arthur. Multiple fires across the country destroyed much needed housing. And George Floyd, an African-American man was unjustly killed in a case of police brutality after officer Derek Chauvin kneeled on his neck until Floyd died with his desperate plea, I can't breathe, a cry used in protests that erupted across the country. Also in this month, Twitter began implementing fact-checking software into its system and said software flagged a tweet from President Trump as misleading. This led to Trump threatening to shut down social media for an anti-conservative bias. Trump's Twitter was later influenced again when the company deleted a tweet of his glorifying violence against protesters after Derek Chauvin was charged with murder. Trump also declared the far-left activist group Antifa to be domestic terrorists. Our own community had an eventful month of May. Drexel University found itself in hot water with the students after the armory was occupied by National Guardsmen. They were being deployed to quell riots in Philadelphia following the protests, and this led to an uproar among the Drexel community due to the hostility of law enforcement responding to riots across the country. And even with all eyes, not only on the police, but Drexel University, 
campus officers managed to find their way into a scene mile past Drexel grounds and into a traumatizing event for West Philadelphia residents. As we saw images of Drexel and UPenn police on 52nd Street in full riot gear firing rubber bullets and young children being medically treated for exposure to tear gas, we came to the question, what exactly are these officers made to protect university students from? And look no further, because on an episode of Inside Look, Alex dove into the answers to this exact question. Why were they responding to calls from the city's police department entirely? You'll just have to click clack to that. But because of this incident, a lawsuit came forth on behalf of Philadelphia residents subjected to police brutality. And that, my friends, was mostly May. In June, the country tried to heal in the wake of the violent tragedy of May. Blackout Tuesday, a social media campaign against racism and police brutality was observed. A Washington DC Mayor Muriel Bowser designated part of 16th Street to be Black Lives Matter Plaza a sentiment that sparked major controversy within the Republican Party. Seattle, Washington protests created an autonomous zone in the city's Capitol Hill. The Minneapolis City Council unanimously voted to disband and replace the MPD, but was prevented in accordance with the city charter. And after a national debate over Confederate monuments, the United States Army renamed 10 military bases that were formerly named after Confederate leaders. Back here in Philly, the city's police department was being sued by more than 140 protesters for unlawful and excessive use of tear gas. In the same month, the city council approved a ban on the use of tear gas. And unfortunately, the month of May saw another case of police brutality, where Richard Brooks was killed by police in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant. The building was then burned down by protesters. And in some global news, the United States found proof that Russia was putting bounties on U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan and paying the Taliban for executing them, and that President Trump was ignoring the briefings. But now, for some good news. The Supreme Court ruled that the Civil Rights Act not only prevents discrimination because of sex, but also because of sexual orientation. Considering the fact that Philadelphia was one of a mere five cities to explicitly ban such discrimination based on not only sexual orientation, but gender identity in the workplace, this was a major decision that moved many into celebration, and rightfully so, during Pride Month. July news was beyond explanation. In addition to celebrating our country's 244th birthday, Happy B-Day, America. <laughs> we saw the arrest of Ghislaine Maxwell. The extremely late announcement of Kanye West's bid for presidency and the Supreme Court demanding that Trump must release all of his financial records. As well as this, the Moderna vaccine began its final phase of testing. But sad news broke that Nye Rivera passed away due to a tragic boating accident. The world also lost civil rights titan John Lewis and media personality Regis Philbin. And back in early July, ICE announced that all international students were required to be taking at least one in-person class or they were going to be deported. This caused an outcry, especially among the Drexel student population, of which a decent percentage consists of international students. This was later, however, rescinded by the Trump administration, much to the glee of students everywhere. Power to the people, am I right? Friends, we're more than halfway through the downhill spiral of a year. August. The Dragon Demo 2 spacecraft, the first US manned crew splashed down since 1975, landed in the Gulf of Mexico, launching us into a new era of space. That news, that news is out of this world. We should organize a space celebration party. I just got a planet. <laughs> Please laugh. Th this is a cry for help. President Biden announced his pick of Kamala Harris as the vice presidential nominee, and the DNC was held in Milwaukee, followed by the RNC in Charlotte. 
Jeff Bezos officially became the first person in history to have a net worth of over $200 billion, a totally fair amount of wealth for one person to have. Unfortunately, August had yet another shooting, with Jacob Blake being killed in Kenosha, Wisconsin by the police. And this launched many more protests over police brutality, including a riot where a white teen named Kyle Rittenhouse shot four people before being arrested. This month also saw the tragic loss of Black Panther actor Chadwick Boseman, who died at age 43 from colon cancer. This news shocked the entire world, as Bozeman was not very public about his battle with cancer. September and the world experienced the loss of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Her passing prompted the rushed confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett, a process that was side-eyed by almost everyone ever. How do we confirm a justice in seven days? and struggle with an impeachment for like two years. This month also saw the first presidential debate, which spawned many memes and internet jokes concerning the playground arguing and incoherent ramblings of the two opponents. If I had a dollar for every time one of those guys interrupted each other, I would have enough funding to run an even more disastrous and more expensive presidential campaign. Another major September event was Philadelphia tackling the homeless crisis, finally gaining a spotlight by the media. After six months of practicing direct action, the city of Philadelphia reached a landmark tentative agreement to give 50 properties to the community land trust created by residents of the homeless encampments. These cities can be found on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway and the corner of Ridge Avenue and Jefferson Street. The Philadelphia Housing Action is the foundation of support towards Philadelphia's unhoused community, stated to fully implement a program to make properties available to nonprofits and the CDC. To this day, both camps are accepting donations of any kind to make their next move as efficient as possible. In October, we saw U.S. national debt surpass 27 million, as well as the first vice presidential debate. While both of those things were terrible, one was an absolute train wreck that could have easily been prevented with careful planning and diligence on the part of our government, and the other was an increase in the national debt. Fittingly, the scariest month of the entire year, the FBI stopped a plot to kidnap and kill Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer over COVID-19 protocols. Democrats in the House of Representatives invoked the 25th Amendment to evaluate the health of the sitting president. And right here in Philly, the community experienced tragic loss at the hands of the police again. Walter Wallace Jr. was shot and killed during a mental health emergency by the Philadelphia Police Department, which incited more violence and protests. We also saw a Stanford report directly link over 30,000 cases and 700 deaths from COVID-19 to President Trump's campaign rallies. In October, we lost rock legend Eddie Van Halen, as well as rapper MF Doom. November was a month of light and darkness. On November 3rd, the presidential election took place with Trump trying prematurely to cut off voting to try and take a win, citing widespread voter fraud. On November 27th, Joe Biden officially won the 2020 presidential election and this prompted President Trump's campaign to file multiple suits over concerns of voter fraud. The U.S. also unfortunately officially exited the Paris Climate Agreement. In November, we mourned the loss of Jeopardy! host Alex Trebek. And finally, December. This month was mostly filled with news concerning the coronavirus pandemic, which is covered in our last video. However, some major events, such as Kyle Rittenhouse standing trial for the homicide charges, the beginning of a federal decriminalization of recreational cannabis, and President Trump pardoning many of his political allies. 
the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines were approved by the CDC and FDA and were distributed to hospitals across the country. 2020 felt like a fever dream. It felt like one disaster after another on top of a global pandemic. But great things happened this year. Parts of the world came together to grieve with one another, strengthening our unity through tragedy. 2020 saw innovation and breakthroughs, and somehow we made it here, defying a lot of odds. How did we do it? It was undeniably a difficult year. And there's no way to sugarcoat that. Nonetheless, I really hope things start to look better for 2021, especially with COVID vaccines rolling out and school back in season. Here's to hoping that the world becomes a better place really soon. Good luck, everyone, and see you next time on Inside Ambition's main report.